they are reading that uh, amendment that was brought in in pair of 47 the change brought about by the amendment is insertion of the words after considering its feasibility and viability and such other requirements as may be specified by the board in addition three provisos have been added to subsection 4 for considering the issue on hand the three provisos are not relevant as regards the insertion of the above quoted words in subsection 4 that does not alter the requirement regarding the approval of the resolution plan by a vote of not less than 75% of the voting share of the financial creditors. The amendment is only to declare that financial creditors ought to consider the feasibility and viability and such other requirements as may be specified by the board while exercising their option on the resolution plan to approve it or reject it, to approve it or reject it. Uh, it is rudimentary that the financial creditors in most cases are national bankers who are called upon to consider the proposed resolution plan, who take into account all the relevant materials including the feasibility and viability and suggest the requirements as may be specified by the board. Additionally, the financial creditors are also required to bear in mind that legislative intent is to bring about resolution and revival of the corporate data so as to benefit not only the corporate data but also the other stakeholders in equal measure. Pair of 48 suffice to it to observe that the amended provision merely restates as to what the financial creditors are expected to bear in mind while expressing their choice during the consideration of the proposal for approval of the resolution plan. No more and no less. Indubitably, the legislature has been consciously not provided for a ground to challenge the justness of the commercial decision expressed by the financial creditors, be it to approve or reject the plan. The opinion so expressed by voting is non-justiciable. Further, in the present cases, there is nothing to indicate as to which other requirements specified by the board at the relevant time has not been fulfilled by the dissenting financial creditor. As noted earlier, the board established under section 188 and 196 of the code, um, it does not empower the board to specify the requirements for accessing commercial decision by the financial creditors. Now, um, we may not be understood to have expressed any opinion either way about the effect of three provisions introduced by the same amendment as to whether it would have retrospective or retroactive effect. That question does not arise for the consideration of these appeals. Our discussion is restricted to the efficiency, efficacy of the amendment to main provision that is subsection 4, whereby the above quoted words, after considering the feasibility and viability and such other requirements may be specified by the board, have been inserted. Now, one very important point in my opinion is uh, the actual position has not been brought to light because the Honorable Supreme Court is taking the stand wherein in para um, you can see uh, where they are uh, trying to say that uh, primarily um, in para 47 um, the, he says that it is rudimentary that financial creditor in most cases are national bankers who are called upon to consider the proposal result, proposes plan would uh, take into account all the relevant materials. But the fact of the matter, if you see, the appellant, uh, Mr. Abhishek Singh, we and all, they should have gone into the details of the decision making process by the bankers. Actually, if you see, the wherever the public sector bankers have lent the money and it has gone bad, then uh, they have no responsibility. Bankers, you know, they will retire and they will get their pension. <coughs> if a statistics has not been done, but if you see that whenever the uh, asset reconstruction companies are there, private lenders are there, the recovery is 100%. Wherever there is a um, bankers, public sector bankers, inevitably it will go for liquidation. 
one reason could be the, there is no re research done by ibbi or uh, uh, the legislature or uh, statistical body or nclt wherein the what is the reason for liquidation when the majority seven, above 75% are public sector bankers and uh, invariably it's going for liquidation because they don't want carp process the carp process the person who takes over will be in a position to dig up and most in the times the loans are bad loans are because of wrong lending by the public sector bankers it is not that all the bankers are bad but the hierarchical system is such that the top bankers are political appointees and that is one of the reasons for the banking system itself is in turmoil otherwise uh, you say take many corporate debtors once they sense there is a problem they are rich they have established very well and uh, even the personal guarantee enforcement uh, has yet to come so therefore this particular point i think uh, the supreme court took a safe attitude because they wanted to justify of course this could be the best decision given situation where they want to make the act work you should not die like that uh, drt as a surface act and all so we have to think of the uh, way in which because finally they have to make the act work but uh, they could have given some suggestion in my opinion to the legislature to make things uh, research to be done of course above 50 crore cbi inquiries come and in economic legislations uh, uh, the investigative uh, fraud serious fraud investigations and then interpretation through the law is very very difficult uh, proving is very difficult that's why white collar crimes are never uh, convicted so but then this is a very gray area where lakhs of crores have already gone a uh, public uh, uh, say tax payer say money saved has already been lost so therefore i feel that uh, the come the uh, argument of uh, abhishek singh viji was very good argument uh, and some many a times the bankers uh, don't care with experience you show the very ordinary chief manager or agm will come to represent agm will not come represent then there is a differential it is not uh, in line many of them are recovery people bankers are become uh, recovery people will come in this uh, game lawyers and recovery people where they are focusing only on legal requirements <coughs> business experts business viability of course the ecosystem itself is not developed well you don't have management experts turn around consultants there is no market for second hand assets developed market in light of all these things uh, the it is uh, pleaded to the uh, legislature to consider that point particularly lakhs of crores have already left the uh, scene so how to go about it that part is, of course as judiciary cannot uh, get into the matter on this lines and i consider this decision is the best decision uh, among the several strong arguments raised uh, they have considered to there now uh, if we are going to um, we may not para 49 we may not be understood to have expressed any opinion on the other three provisions that's okay retrospective law is there the law 50 para the learned counsel for the resolution applicant and other stakeholders supporting the resolution plan of the concerned creditors next relied upon the amendment uh, section 34 which has come into force <coughs> with effect from 6th day of june 2018 why the insolvency and bankruptcy court um here uh, 75% has been substituted for 66 taking clue from this amendment it was argued that since the amendment substitutes the threshold requirement of 75% 66 and since the same has been brought into force when appeals were pending nclat was obliged to consider its effect on the present cases further being substitution it must be assumed that amended provision was always there from the beginning of the code we are not impressed by this submission in our view by this amendment a new norm and qualifying standard for approval of a resolution has been introduced 
that cannot be treated as declaratory or clarificatory or uh, procedural matter as such. Whereas the Stated Amendment Act makes it explicitly clear that it shall be deemed to have come into force on 6th day of January. So that uh, point was well read. Thus by mere use of expression substituted in section 23 subsection 3 to 3A of the amended act 2018, it would not make the provision retrospective in operation or having retroactive effect. This interpretation is reinforced by the fact that there is a no indication in the Amendment Act 2018 that the legislature intended to undo and or govern the decisions already taken by COC of the concerned corporate debtors. This is the point we are going to. Now we will go to the next level is the pair of 52. Now they are reading that 